So it's now my distinct honor to introduce Dr. Laura Bloomberg, the exceptional associate dean here at the Humphrey School. Uh, prior to stepping into that role, I had the honor of working with her at the Center for Integrative Leadership here at the university. And um, she is just an exceptional leader um, who leads daily with uh, a healthy dose of humor and um, vision and just leads by example. So um, it's fun to have her in this space with all of you leaders. Uh, so she's here to welcome us to this space here at the Humphrey School. We're so deeply appreciative of the partnership with the Humphrey, an institution with a mis mission and vision that aligns well with the national YNPN network. So without further ado, I'll let Laura come to the stage. Good morning and welcome. I am absolutely delighted that you are here and I can't think of anything more important um, on this Friday in June than to welcome you to this space and to honor your presence here and the work that you're doing. As I was driving in this morning, I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you and I was just telling Jen, I'm never quite sure what I'm going to say until I actually say it. <laughs> That's not always true, but it's kind of true this morning. <laughs> Um, because I don't know what the energy of the room is like and what the people will be like. And then I walked in here and saw you out in the atrium and it was so clear that you bring such joy and such passion and such energy to the work that you're going to be doing. And it made me think of two things um, that will be seemingly unrelated to you and some of you will think I'm nuts. So with apologies to those of you who think I'm crazy, let me share my thoughts. One is about looking back and looking forward. Um, and, and it's actually really quite moving to me. And the other is the sport of curling, <laughs> which I'm going to talk to you about this morning. <laughs> so imagine this. You are here in this space, in this Coles Auditorium, um, capping an amazing week for us at the Humphrey School and in many ways an amazing year. We have spent the past year commemorating the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Civil Rights Act. And the actual signing of that Civil Rights Act happened in 1964 in June, not long ago. And our namesake, Hubert H. Humphrey, who is looking over all of you here, was very, very instrumental in signing that Civil Rights Act. He actually broke the filibuster that was um, threatening to preclude the signing of that act. If that didn't happen, we wouldn't have a President Obama. Some of you may not be in this room, and I'm certain that many of the students that we will welcome here at the Humphrey School this fall would not be here. That's a huge thing. And that was 50 years ago. A lot has happened since then. We commemorated a lot of the events this year in this space, in these, in these chairs where you're sitting. Just this week, we had a leadership award and we recognized some people who were very active in that civil rights movement and have been active since. Shonda Smith Baker, who some of you know, who is a nonprofit leader extraordinaire in this community, I believe, an African-American woman who works every single day to advance the mission of that organization, was here and was being honored. And she, she was being honored as this young professional and when she took the podium to accept her award on behalf of the entire Pillsbury United Communities organization, she took that opportunity to recognize a woman in her mid-80s, Dr. Josie Johnson, who was one of the first black women to lead um, the NAACP here in this state, and who was also at the March on Washington. And Shonda, as she's accepting her leadership award, talked about the value of the women that went before her, the people who led before her, and the ways that they had an impact on her. That notion of looking back to look forward. And then, as I walked down here this morning, I thought about this. Last night, I don't mean to be like all down about this, I think this is actually really more moving than sad. Um, we had a memorial service in this space less than 24 hours ago for Senator Jim Oberstar. Now I realize not all of you are from Minnesota, but I'm guessing all of you have an opinion about transportation and some would argue that there is no leader in current times in this country who had more impact on things like public transit, bike accessibility, walkability in our cities than Jim Overstar, who chaired this transportation committee for about a gazillion years. So imagine, in these spaces where you are, we had people in their 80s and 90s, some of them carrying their little portable oxygen tanks being helped down these stairs, 
Where you're sitting is where Vice President Walter Mondale sat yesterday, next to Jim Overstar's wife, Nancy Kassebaum, also a long-term member of Congress, commemorating this man for not just his public service, but his social sector service to make a difference in this world in a way he felt passionate about. So for me, I just have to tell you, it's very, very moving to have spent this week and many of the past months looking back and cherishing the work of people who won't be with us much longer, people in their 80s and 90s, and then to wrap the week looking at all of you and realizing you stand on the shoulders of giants, but you also stand on your own two feet and will do kick-ass things, I'm sure, <laughs> amazing things with your leadership, and I'm so glad for that. So now, what about curling, huh? <laughs> I have no idea. I just like curling. No, I'm... <laughs> I have this image of curling. I went to school at the University of Minnesota Duluth a, a long time ago. And um, curling was a big thing there, but I just actually looked it up not long ago. There's a big curling club in Arizona that meets in the summer, so it's not just a cold Minnesota thing. It's, how many of you have ever, ever heard of the sport of curling? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Here's the image that's in my head. We've got people who are pushing this big, heavy granite stone down the ice, right? They're propelling this stone. You're talking about using your leadership to propel a new vision, right? And what's interesting to me is the sweepers, the people who are out front, just sweeping like crazy, not propelling the stone, not deciding where the stone's gonna go, but getting all the crap out of the way. And maybe that's our job now. Maybe that was our job in commemorating Jim Oberstar last night, our job in honoring the people who moved the Civil Rights Act forward in, the, in, in 1964 and in the years since, maybe the image is that that's the sweeping. That's the sweeping. That's just trying to get the junk out of the way. Jen and I were just talking about, and you'll hear from her in a moment, and she's remarkable, um, the ways in which the Bush Foundation might be setting the context or the environment that allows people to do great things, but not causing or propelling people to do great things, allowing that to bubble up. So I have this image now in my 50s, not my 80s, but not in my 20s or 30s either, of the sweeping. Um, and what is it that we can do to get some garbage out of your way so that you can just take that stone and let it fly? And that's my image, and I'm so glad that I'm seeing you here at the end of this powerful, powerful week at the Humphrey School. I hope that you have a fantastic day. I hope that you feel welcomed and hosted here, and um, I look forward to hearing great things. Thank you. <laughs>